Derby Day on Tyneside. By three o'clock, this stadium will be packed with people preparing to settle an old score. Everybody's getting ready for the match of the season. Some fans go to extraordinary lengths to display their loyalty. Well, my full name's now Gary Sunland AFC Lamb. I suppose the reason I changed it was trying to get a little bit closer to the club. Um, when people ask us how important the club are to me, um, when I look at my two children, I put the club on equal part of my two children. You couldn't get any more important in my life than my daughters and my club. Um, they're equal as far as I'm concerned because there's nothing that can possibly go above them. I love Newcastle United with all my heart. Always have done since I was a boy. I seen my first game December 1962 when I was eight years old and I've loved them ever since. Home and away. I, unfortunately I can't get away matches so much now but I love them with all my heart. Always have done, always will do. It's not only just a game of football, it's Sunderland Football Club and it's life. It is really life. I've got a little saying which I actually use. Sunderland FC, it's a way of life to the faithful. I won't wear anything red. So I, don't, I, don't, I don't have anything red in my wardrobe. I don't eat bacon because it's red. I don't even like tomatoes because they're red. I just don't have anything red in my life. Better dead than red. Well, I think we all know that the North East Derby is one of those times when Everybody is capable of causing some element of problems. A lot of emotions run high on this particular day. It's not just the hooligan element we've got to cons consider ourselves about. We've seen in the past that normal fans can actually behave extremely uh, badly because of the emotions that actually run with this particular game. Well, every football game is classified depending on its, its risk, if you like, and we have a category of A, B and C. A being a low risk and C being a higher risk. But really, when we're talking about Newcastle Sunderland, we're talking about C plus in many respects. Well, the risks really are to do with a, a potential disorder. It's a very highly emotional and charged game. It does affect the region. Nearly everybody's affected by, by Derby Day. And from that point of view, there's always the possibility of rival fans coming together and some sparks it off and a bit of disorder. And what we want to do is have a day where everybody enjoys themselves, whatever the result, and have a really uh, good day out without any trouble. I've been in Sunderland Farm for about uh, 34 years. I joined the Navy when I was 15 and uh, I, I had to go away for nearly nine months and that nine months was, was the worst of my life because I couldn't go and see some football club play football. I work as a prison officer. Um, I've been a prison officer for nearly 20 years and when I joined the service the uniform was blue. Um, as you can see now it's black and white and uh, the day that they changed over that was the worst day of my life having to wear black and white. I, I wouldn't say hate, hate is a strong word but um, the nearest thing that you can come to hate is Newcastle United. I'll always wear something on my uniform. That's how I, I, I rectify it with myself, you know. It's a fist with uh, keep the faith and, and something until I die, which I always am and will be. Come on! So I think we should give the Matlams a good tank in the deep. <laughs> well, I support Newcastle because I'm uh, Geordie born and bred. Uh, I've been going for over 35 years now to the ground. My dad started me off and uh, I like to keep on uh, following the team and I've got Christopher going exactly the same way as me. I support Newcastle because I come from Newcastle and my dad's brainwashed us, so it's more like I've got to support Newcastle. The biggest game of the season is the Newcastle Sunderland game, or the one down there, and uh, we always want to finish above them in the league because we're the biggest club in the area, and uh, you know they're just the minnows as far as we're concerned. Everyone in my dad's side of the family's always supported Newcastle, so I think it would spell the chain a bit if I didn't support Newcastle. I see this, this Sunderland game as uh, the most important fixture of the season. More important than Manchester United, 
you get the same number of points, three points. But it's more than three points. More important than Arsenal, more important than Tottenham. Because Tottenham. it's everything to the public in the area. It's, 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 the, it's the result of the region. It commences when you're born. I was born into a Newcastle United family. My father had five sons. I had four brothers, all daft about Newcastle United. We never thought about going into Sunderland. Didn't like them, always laughed when they lost. And you grow up with that. There's only one team you can't support. Two clubs in this area, you know, you don't have two loves. Uh, and in football, you know, the only love that, that you have is crucial to your life. It's a monumental love that's divided the region for hundreds of years. You can go back as far as the 17th century during the Civil War when the two won opposing sides. Newcastle supported Charles I and the Royalist cause, while Sunderland supported Oliver Cromwell and the Roundheads. Later, as football developed in the 19th century, it became the natural outlet for this rivalry to grow and to develop. There was one particular incident in 1901 when a match had to be abandoned before kickoff when 70,000 fans tried to pack into St James's Park when the capacity was only around about 35,000. There was nothing that could stop the fans trying to see the game that day. They climbed over walls, they broke down gates, they did anything to witness this match between the two big rivals. Because the ground was so full, the grandstands were packed, the terraces were packed, so the crowd ended up spilling onto the pitch. 89 years later, and fans once again halted the derby. Trouble flared five minutes from the end when Sunderland made it 2-0, putting the game beyond Newcastle's reach. In what appeared to be a well-orchestrated move rather than a spontaneous reaction, hundreds of fans spilled onto the pitch, determined to stop the match. Trouble like this led to the away supporters being banned. In 1996, red and white and black and white were forced to unite to convince the authorities they could watch their beloved derby in harmony. But the ancient rivalry wasn't washed away. Well, the northeast finishes and ends at that river. Simple as that. North of the river, Newcastle. South of the river, they're 12 miles away from us. If anybody ever sees an impression of the North East, the first thing they always see is the Tyne Bridge. And I think that annoys a lot of people from the, from the Sunderland area because Sunderland's actually bigger than Newcastle. The people of Sunderland, I mean, they don't talk the same way as us. They, I mean, who can say where these keys are these? Who talks like that, you know what I mean? You can actually go down south and the first thing people will say to you, oh, you're a Geordie. And that's one thing that really annoys us. I'm a Mackham and I'm a Mackham through and through. And I, I just don't like at all being called a Geordie. Obviously, as we know, there's a lot of local rivalry. And this is the game that they're interested in. It's the first of the season. 52,000 fans, 3,000 Sunderland fans will be coming to the game. The majority of those fans will actually be coming in a convoy. A convoy at the moment that would appear to be 43 buses and coaches. They really hate Newcastle. It's more than just football. They've got all the money when the Tyne and Weir development thing was going on. They got the Eldon Square. We went down the pan and it's more than football, but we hate them football wise as well. My dad doesn't like us going shopping through there, never mind. Spending me money through there, so 